Saturday. This is the last video I'm gonna be doing that's spooky for a while. Um, tonight I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Shag Harbor UFO incident. Pretty, it's pretty freaky. Okay, so Shag Harbor is an area that's located on the southern tip of Nova Scotia, like at the very, very bottom if you look at the map. Um, it is about 15 minutes away from Barrington Passage and is a very small community, seen as Barrington Passage, like they're both very small. Um, on October 4th, 1967, something extraordinary happened that night. Um, it shook the whole province of Nova Scotia. It even reached all the way down to Halifax and God knows where else. What happened that night, I guess, a fella named Lori Wickens was driving home with his friends. They were coming home from a dance and he noticed these flashing lights in the sky. Like they were just kind of blink, blink, blinking them back and forth. And he thought like maybe it was just a plane. And then he got to the top of the hill in Shag Harbor, one of the hills, I'm not too sure what hill. He noticed it had went into the water. So I'm assuming like he probably freaked out thinking like it was a plane that probably crashed. So they, him and his friends, they waited until they spotted the first telephone booth back when they those were a thing. And they, he ended up calling the RCMP and reporting that he thinks a plane had crashed. So the RCMP wasted no time getting to the scene. Um, as they got there, they seen like this pale yellow light at the surface of the water. And it was moving like out can't think of the word I'm looking for, but it was going out to shore. And behind it was a trail of yellow foam. Now, this wasn't ordinary sea foam. So the fisherman said, well, the fisherman that they asked, um, they said they've seen sea foam all their lives and this was not it. It was a weird yellow color. And I guess it smelled like sulfur too, I've heard. So, um, the officers and all the people, like, by that time the officers got there, people started gathering, so. The officers and all the people, they just gathered there and watched this object just disappear into the ocean. Now, nobody has a clue on what it could have been. Some people say it could have been a meteorite, some people say it could have been a German, uh, German submarine, because it was still kind of during the war times, I guess. Like, things like that were still going on, I guess. I'm not sure. Piper, what are you doing? Be good. <laughs> She's destroying my bed, you guys. Piper, come here, lay down. Don't chew my blanket. No, don't chew my blanket. You be easy. <sighs> this dog is so bad, you guys. Look. No! <laughs> oh. Jeez. Piper. Okay, I gotta deal with her. One second. Two hours later. So, the RCMP figured, well, maybe it was a plane that crashed, so they ended up calling the Halifax... Nope. Re the Rescue Coordination Center that is located in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, the RCC put out an urgent call to the, to the military and civilian services asking for reports of any missing aircrafts from Labrador to Cape Hatteras. Now, about an hour later, they ended up calling the RCMP back saying that there was no report of anything missing. Everything was all accounted for. So, this is where it raises some speculations on what it could be. Nobody knew, so... The small area of Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia took the media by storm, you guys. It, there was even a comic book written about it. There was like the documentary that I'm gonna put in the description below. Um, there's just a whole bunch of stuff about it. We even have a museum down here that you can go visit that has, I think they have like artifacts and stuff. Um, it was just, it just was really popular. So, Let's see, on October 7th, Navy divers were sent down 
from HMCS Granby. They searched the bottom of the ocean for the wreckage off of Shag Harbor. Now it was reported that they didn't find anything, but there's few people in Shag Harbor who think they could have covered it up. Maybe they did find something because they were seen hauling out like big boxes and stuff and lo loading them into the military van and they like one of, I don't know who it was, but somebody asked them, hey, what, what's this stuff? And they're like, I forget what they said now. I was watching, it's, it, it's in the documentary anyway. Sorry, I just got a little distracted there. Um, so, there's actually, there's an old army base located in Backrow Point, Nova Scotia. It is a NORAD radar station, which provided aerial detection during the war. It is still active to this day. I tried to get some good shots by it, but I didn't dare to go too close because I didn't know. Like, it's, I think it's still like heavily, like, protected. I think they've got like cameras and everything, and I didn't want to, you know, get into any of that. Too much going on in this world. <laughs> so, I'm gonna put some pictures of it. Um, now, the cool thing is, this radar station, it actually picked up something in the water the night of the UFO crash. Now, I don't know what, but I'm gonna put a clip of somebody who used to work there. He's anonymous. He's speaking out anonymously and breaking the military code of silence on what had happened that night. A former staff member of the Barrington radar station breaks this military code of silence. It had involved a lot of people. It was a big event. And they had thought that it was something out of the normal. And everybody inside that room knew what had happened that night and were held to secrets. He was briefed by his commanding officer about what the radar actually detected that night. He had seemed to think that it had entered the airspace somewhere in northwestern Canada and sort of wobbled through the atmosphere until it linked into Atlantic Canada. That it almost hit an airplane somewhere outside of Quebec and that it had crash landed in Shag Harbor that there was another one tending it, and that after the event, they both had moved. Did the military know that there were, in fact, two UFOs in Shag Harbor, and that they'd left the impact site submerged, coming to rest off the coast near a top-secret military base 30 miles away? So, the military had already knew about the Shag Harbor UFO incident, and they were tracking the object under the water. So the object went all the way from Shag Harbor to a CFS in Shelburne. It is said that the CFS sent out military ships and divers to go check out where the UFO was, because I guess the UFO was there, kind of like stationed there for a little bit. There is one fella, I don't know if there's any clips about it, I think there might be, but I couldn't find it. But this town is really small, things get around, so. This fella, I think he was, he spoke at Anonymous. He said that he was actually involved with the CFS in Shelburne. He said that when he, when he dove or when the divers went to look to see what was going on, they seen little men or not little, but they seen figures, people, I don't know, underwater working on this ship. And there was activity going on. Other than that, they were trying to fix the ship. So this fella thinks it could have been extraterrestri extraterrestrials trying to fix their ship that it crashed. Um, let's see what else. There was other objects that was found down there. Um, yeah, so basically that's all that happened. Um, I'm trying to make this video interesting. I was supposed to interview somebody, but it kind of fell through the cracks. Um, to this day, nobody knows what it could have been. Like I said earlier, it could have been anything, really. Like, a lot of people now, they kind of say, well, it was just a, just a meteorite that fell, or, oh, it was just a German ship, or, see, like, nobody really knows. Um... There's been like other things that has happened around here 
in this little town of Barrington Passage. There's been, people have claimed they have seen extraterrestrials here before. Um, lots of activity like that. Um, if you guys want to check out the whole documentary, like I said, I'm going to put it in the comment, or in the, right, in the description below. I highly recommend it if you find that stuff interesting. Um, I think there might, maybe, they might make another documentary about it, or, I don't know, I heard some things about something, like, there's gonna be a documentary done about aliens around here in this town. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I'm sorry it wasn't much. I really expected it for, to be a lot bigger than it is right now. But like I said, unfortunately, things happen, things fall through. But hopefully you still find this interesting. Sorry for my stuttering and jumbling words. I've been so tired today. It's currently storming out. And the weather definitely plays a part in how I feel and my moods and stuff. So anyway, I hope you all liked it. And please subscribe and like this video and I don't know what else is going to be in store. I might post some more videos next month. I don't really think I'm going to have a set topic. I think I'm just going to go like off random things like trying new things, trying new restaurants. I don't know. Anyway, stay tuned. It could get interesting. <laughs>